Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Keating. Welcome to Emmanuel United Methodist Church, the Church of the Bells, as we call it, here in Camillus, New York. We're glad that you are here for worship with us today. We're going to be celebrating the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, our scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew in the 10th chapter, and we're going to hear the very end of Jesus' instructions to his original 12 disciples as he sends them out to do ministry in his name. My message, How to Be Really Welcoming, will follow up on that theme as well. You know, this is the last week of our June contest that we are running here, welcoming people from far and wide to our worship service. If you're uh, watching this from a place other than Camillus, New York, why don't you send me an email, if you would, to pastorjackk at gmail.com and let me know where it is that you're located and who might have invited you to this worship time. We would be glad that you did. We're trying to see how far and wide our worship services are reaching as we uh, continue through these uh, pandemic times. All right, we're going to warm up our hearts and our voices for worship. We're going to ask Dan and Lisa to lead us in that now.
God has called us together and gathered us in for a time of worship. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship and praise our God. Let us pray. Source of life, be with us this day as we seek to open ourselves to your love and your wholeness. Be with us as we set aside our everyday worries and concerns and concentrate on your forgiveness and loving kindness. Create in us anew a sense of meaning and purpose in the spirit of the Christ. Amen. Dan and Lisa, will you join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we profess our faith together? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We do base our faith on those historic words of profession. Thank you for joining me in those words. Let's listen now to the reading of this morning's scripture lessons. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our next scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. And let us now listen to a piece of special music.
Good morning! I have a little show and tell for you guys today. Have you guys ever seen one of these? This is our welcome mat at our house here. Um, I know that ours doesn't say welcome on it. We have one somewhere that does, but it's so old and used that the welcome has kind of been rubbed off. So I got this cool one that we have by our back door with the funky little pattern on it. See that? It's a little dirty because, you know, we've been in and out. We've been welcoming people. So usually we'd see a mat like this, not sitting next to me in the room, but outside the door to our house, right? It usually has two purposes, right? For one, it's a reminder for people to wipe their shoes or their feet before they enter our house so that they don't track in dirt or mud or rocks or in the winter road salt we don't want it tracked into our home we like to keep it clean so the welcome mat is a good reminder for everybody to wipe their shoes off and secondly it's placed outside the home outside of your door as a sign to let people know that they are welcome into your home welcome what does that word mean welcome it means to receive someone in a warm and friendly way. 
are people always welcome in our homes? Not always, but usually if, if you know they're coming. Do we welcome people into our home if their skin is a different color from ours? Of course we do. Do we welcome people into our home if they don't have as much money as we do? Of course we do. How about in our church? Do you think that we make everyone feel welcome in our church? Do we speak to those people who are just visiting from somewhere else? If someone comes to our church and they're not dressed in the same way that we're dressed, do we make sure that they feel welcome? Jesus says, he who receives you receives me. If we turn that around, we will understand that, we, that if we do not welcome others into our home and into our churches, it is the same as if we are refusing to welcome Jesus. We wouldn't do that now, would we? So we'll put our welcome mat out. And we'll make sure that we mean it. So let's pray today. Dear Father, help us to remember that when we refuse to welcome others into our home and to our church, it is the same as refusing to welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you all... Will you join your heart with mine in prayer? Oh God, I pray today that the words of my lips and the meditations of each and every heart might be pleasing to you and might in some small way bring a smile to the face of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, four years ago this week, you welcomed Becky and I into your midst. In the four years now that have passed, you have welcomed us into your hearts into your homes, at your weddings, and birthdays, and anniversaries, and baptisms, and funerals. You have gathered us in at Christmas, and Easter, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, and a host of other times. You have shared yourselves, shared the fellowship of your table with us, offered us the fruits of your gardens, delighted us with the camaraderie of a good game of cards. But more than this, much more you have ministered to us, offered the cup of cold water and blessed and strengthened us when we needed it. Today's gospel speaks eloquently of welcome. Jesus tells his disciples, as he sends them out to announce the coming of the kingdom with acts and deeds and speech. He tells them then, and I think he tells us today, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet just because that person is a prophet will be given the same reward as a prophet. Anyone who welcomes a good person just because that person is good will be given the same reward as a good person. And anyone who gives one of my humble followers even a cup of cool water just because that person is my follower, will surely be rewarded. So what does it mean, then, to welcome? How do we do that here in this place? How do we make this house of God a home? How do we make this congregation, Emmanuel, even more of a community of love and family? Well, those questions are questions that our faith community continues to wrestle with every day. Through the stirring of God's Spirit, we have been led to this time. It's a scary time, but it's also an exciting time, a time that is pregnant with opportunity, a time that is pregnant with suspense. It is God's time. It is our time. We, you and I, are called to give, called to give welcome, called to give to God, and called to give as God gives, in abundance, 
using God's economy, God's accounting in faith, surrendering our wills to God's purpose. And we know that already. There was a poll conducted a few years ago by the New York Times that reported then that 87% of Americans feel a personal responsibility to help make the world a better place. 87%. 87% of Americans knew that it was their responsibility to make the world better by giving abundantly, by surrendering of themselves. And so we who worship and serve here already know that the Lord calls us, calls us to self-giving love, calls us to welcome as a sign of that love. But you know, the same poll found that only 53% of Americans do volunteer work on a regular basis. And even more alarming, found that 42% of Americans actually believe that nice guys finish last. Nice guys finish last? Jesus said, And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. I once read, and I think I have told this story before, about a a woman whose church group brought Christmas gifts for a missionary family. After they had meticulously selected these presents based on the family's need and sizes and ages, the group gathered to pack them for shipping. That's when another member of the church just whisked in and plopped down an almost new men's coat on the table. Seems her husband didn't like the style. And as she turned to go, she suggested that maybe one of the missionaries could use it. Several people were offended. The coat wouldn't fit anybody in the missionary family. Obviously, that woman hadn't given much thought or time to the project. But the other presents didn't completely fill the box they were packing. So, somebody decided to fold up the coat and stuck it in because it made perfect packing material. Shortly after Christmas, a thank you note arrived from that missionary family. They thanked the church for their many gifts and especially for what they called the miracle gift. You see, it seems that during a storm, a destitute man had knocked on their door. He was so ill-dressed for the cold that they invited him to stay until the storm had passed. And even though their visitor would have no gifts in that box, they were in the middle of opening it at the time. And that's when they discovered the coat. And it fit the man perfectly. Do those things really happen in the world? You bet they do, all the time. You never know when you give that cup of cold water, that unneeded coat, how that gift will be used by God. There is no gift given. There is no welcome that's ever given in vain. Jesus said, Whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, truly I say to you, you will not lose your reward. Friends, I pray that you will hear those words today, that you will hear, as St. Paul said in the reading from Romans this morning, that you're asked to give of yourselves to God as people who have been raised from death to life, making every part of your body serve God so that you will completely belong to him. Will you help us make God's house a home? Will you give of yourself to God in Christ's name? Friends, God waits to hear your answer. Amen. Friends, will you come into a spirit of prayer with me? Gracious God, 
Make our lives through Jesus, our true vine. Make them living branches of faith and hope and love so that the very existence of others might be enriched and our lives might grow mature with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that Spirit given to us by you, our Heavenly Father, and by your Son and our brother, Christ Jesus. God, help us to be persons who who love unconditionally as you love, people who do not place demands or conditions on those we accept, and who do not give up the freedom that Christ won for us by trying to outlove others. Caring God for our brothers and sisters in all their diverse needs, we pray to you this day. We pray with thankfulness for those prayers that you have already answered and with hearts of hope for those things that are yet to be. Hear now the prayers of our hearts and the words of our lips. We remember before you today, O God, these people and situations. All of these things, O God, we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us all to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, you might remember that last week we began talking about how it is that we move our churches and ourselves as individuals from being inclusive people and inclusive churches to being anti-racist people in anti-racist churches. After all, the uh, prophet Isaiah wrote that one day God will restore ultimate justice, but until then, God commands God's people to pursue justice here on the earth. And we're going to begin doing that here at Emmanuel with a new Zoom Bible study on living in a world with justice. That Bible study is going to start the week of July 6th on Zoom. We're going to offer two identical sessions each week, one on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. and the other on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. They will be identical sessions, so you can attend either or both or change from one to the other as your schedule calls for. All you need to do to be a part of this group is to send me an email to pastorjackk at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to send you out an invitation that will contain the link to join our Zoom Bible study. There's no book to buy for this study. All you need to do is have your favorite version of the scriptures available with you each week. So that's going to begin the week of July 6th. Just let me uh, know by email that you want to be included, and we'll make sure that uh, your invitation arrives in plenty of time for you to join the group. Thanks, and we'll look forward to seeing you in our study the week of July 6th. I'd like to share with you now a few announcements in the life of our church. We are continuing our Monday morning coffee chat with the pastors. We meet via Zoom at 10 a.m., so we hope you will come bring a cup of coffee or a cold drink if you prefer and check in with everybody. It's a wonderful time of fellowship 
And if you'd like to be involved, you just need to email Pastor Jack for an invitation. We're also continuing our midweek worship and praise on Wednesdays at 2. And if you're able to join us, it's a wonderful time to pause and thank God for all of the many gifts we've been given and to offer some praise and and, uh, prayers. If you have some prayer concerns but you're not able to join us, you can email those to Pastor Jack. Both of those are Zoom meetings, and uh, if you'd like to be involved, you just need to send an email to Pastor Jack at pastorjackk at gmail.com, and he will send you an invitation. We have begun our in-person worship in the parking lot on Sundays at 9 a.m. If you would like to be with us, we'd love to have you. You need to bring your mask and wear it and also bring a chair. If it is raining, we will not have in-person worship. We will all be worshiping online. And we will continue this online worship offering also. So if you can't join us or you're not ready to join us, please continue to uh, join us online. Our building remains closed and the staff continues to work remotely. If you have any needs or questions or you just want to check in and chat, please call or email either Pastor Jack or myself. On Monday, July 6th, Pastor Jack is going to be starting a Zoom Bible study. It's called Living in a World of Justice. He will be offering the same program on Mondays at 7 and Wednesdays at 10. And this is a a Bible-based study, so you don't need to purchase any books. You just need to have your Bible. If you would like to participate, again, you need to email Pastor Jack and ask him for the Zoom invitation. Let us now listen to some beautiful singing and our final hymn, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. sisters and brothers, go now in peace. Love and care for one another in the name of Jesus. And may the holy God provide you mercy. May Jesus Christ greet you as you welcome the stranger. And may the Holy Spirit lead you in all ways to eternal life, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.